Alright guys, in this video we're going to look at, um, again, we're going to look at uh, chapter 2.5, but we're going to focus on transverse and azimuth angles. Okay, so this is under chapter 2.5. Um, what we've already done so far, if I can just flip back here, is we've already discussed the basics of Cartesian vectors, uh, rectangular components, etc., and then um, the previous videos we've discussed coordinate direction angles, okay? Um, but now we're coming to what they call transverse and azimuth angles. Uh, and I just want to remind you guys, don't, don't get lost in the woods. Just remember what, what are we actually trying to do. Um, well, the, the, the chapter tells us what we're trying to do. We are trying to convert force vectors into Cartesian vector form. And why is that again? It's because it just simply makes our vector algebra much simpler when we have uh, forces in three dimensions. Okay, so what we've done before is we've had, we've had our forces, right? For example, there's A, there's our force vector, and uh, the way that we originally, or initially rather, converted into, um, into Cartesian vector form was we needed to calculate our coordinate direction angles, okay? And then that allowed us to write out our vector in this kind of form, in AXI, AYJ, AZK, and um, anyways, I can't, I'm not going to go over that whole thing again because I did it in the previous two videos, um, but I'm just trying to show you where we're coming from, is that we, we initially were given... Um, or we were meant to calculate our coordinate direction angles. And then that would allow us to write our, our vector in Cartesian vector form. Well, there's another way of converting this vector into Cartesian vector form. And that is by using something called the transverse and azimuth angles. Okay? Very big and fancy words. But simply, if you look at this figure 228, okay, you see again, we have this arbitrary vector A in blue. And uh, again, I'm just going to show us, then we've got our Z axis, we've got our X axis, and we've got our Y axis. Now, um, the azimuth angle, this word here, azimuth, okay, refers to this angle phi. Okay, just go and Google azimuth, go and check it out on Wikipedia. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why they're specifically using these words, but anyways, just, just try to get the concept. Again, what, what you do is use... Okay, how about, how about we just come back here quickly? How do you calculate the coordinate direction angles, or, or rather, what are they? If you stand at the origin, okay and you put one arm in the direction of the vector and another arm in the direction of one of the axes and you bring your arms together then that refers to these coordinate direction angles okay so if i'm standing here and i put my say my left arm or right arm it doesn't matter one of the arms in the direction of that that vector and the other arm in the direction of the x axis and then i bring my arms together that is then the alpha angle. Okay, similarly with beta and similarly with gamma. Okay, now, actually, this, this phi is the same as that gamma. If you, if you put your one arm in the direction of, of the vector A and the other arm in the direction of the, uh, the Z axis, and you bring your arms together, then that's what gives us phi, which is the called the azimuth angle. Okay? Azimuth angle. Now, remember, I'm going to just remind us, what are we trying to do? Don't forget what we're trying to do. We are trying to convert a force vector into Cartesian vector form, which means we require the x, y, and z components of that vector. So again, we've got this force vector, but we are trying to 
determine the, the X, Y, and Z components so that we can write it out in Cartesian vector notation. Okay, so please don't forget what we're trying to do. But in this case, instead of getting uh, working with the coordinate direction angles, we may be given different angles. And the one may be the, um, what they call the azimuth angle, which I just discussed, which is really exactly the same <laughs> as the gamma angle here, uh, the coordinate direction angle gamma. So I'm not sure why they don't use the same, the same angle, but nevertheless, just take note of that. And so, so if I have, if I have um, this vector A, how am I going to determine what the, the Z component is? We'll get to the X and Y in a minute. How am I going to determine what the Z component is? Well, it's very simple. This triangle, can you see that? This triangle is actually a right angle triangle, okay? Just like this picture here. That triangle there is a right angle. Okay, so if I have this triangle and I have a right angle there, all I need to do is say A, the magnitude of A, cos of phi will give me this Z component. Does that make sense? So that's what we have here. How do I determine my Z component of my A? All I need to do is know what the magnitude of the vector A is and then multiply it by the cos of this azimuth angle. Okay? Does that make sense? So that's the very first step. Then, so that is easy. If we've, if we've got this angle or, I hope you can see this guys, this angle here would then be 90, can you see this angle that I'm talking about? 90, it would be 90 degrees minus phi. So if I've got that angle, this azimuth angle, or if I've got, um, I forget now, what is the word, is it called the complementary angle? You guys have just done this in, in high school. I need to just look, look up that term. But if you've got this, that, can you see that that's a right angle? Okay, so if, if I've either got phi or I've got that angle, okay, then I'm able to determine what this vertical component is, AZ, okay? Um, the next thing is, next thing is we want to determine what our X and our Y components are to, in order to convert this into Cartesian vector form. So... So now, if I, the next thing that I can do is I can, uh, I can get the projection of this vector A onto the x, y plane. The projection of A onto the x, y plane. What does that mean? It means that if I stand perfectly on the, uh, above it, right, if I... If I'm looking at the xy plane uh, from the z direction, I'm standing, I'm looking down in the z direction, I'm, and um, I, I'm, I'm looking perpendicular to the xy plane, and I shine a light on this a vector, then I will get this line here that has been projected onto the xy plane. Right? Okay? So, uh, you need to understand what is a projection. So, if I'm shining the light onto this vector, I'm going to get this projection in the x, y plane. And what the textbook calls this um, component is A dashed. A dashed. So, we start from A. We use phi, which is the azimuth angle, to get our AZ component. Okay? Then, we project A onto the XY plane and we get A dashed. Okay, so what would A dashed be? How do you think we would calculate that? Well, if 
you take a look at this again, again, this azimuth angle phi, can you see that that, um, that component there is exactly the same as that component? So how would you get this component? We would say the magnitude of A sine of phi would give us that component, which is exactly the same as that. And that, this is pretty much what they've done here. They've said A dashed, remember what is A dashed? A dashed is the projection of A onto the XY plane, and it is equal to A sine phi, okay? It's equal to A, the magnitude of A sine of phi gives us that component. Remember, cos of phi, cos of phi gives us the Z, the Z component, but sine of phi gives us this component that is projected onto the XY plane. All right? But we're still not there yet. All we've done is we've projected this onto the XY plane. And why would we want to do that? Because now we are in the XY plane. And now if I've got this angle, which is now, which is called the transverse angle. If I've got that angle, well, I've got that angle, right? Then... I'm able to obtain now my X and my Y. So if I've got that angle, and I've already calculated A dashed by saying A sine phi, then I can say A dashed times cos of theta, which is the transverse angle, cos of theta, then gives me my AX. And A dashed sine of theta would give me my AY. So can you see that? AX is then equal to A dashed cos theta. A dashed cos theta gives me AX. And then A dashed sine theta gives me AY. Okay? But then, remember, A dashed is simply A sine phi from here. A dashed is what? A dashed is A sine phi. So if I sub put that in over there, I get A sine phi times cos theta. A sine phi cos theta. So, if I'm there, I've got A, then I first have to get that component, which is A sine of phi. Or, you see that if I had that angle there, the complement, I would say A cos of that angle. Do, do you see that? Remember that that is a those are, those are perpendicular directions. And if I say A sine of phi, I get that. Or if I say A cos of this angle, then I would still get A dashed. Okay? So, A's, AX, AX is equal to A dashed cos theta, which is A sine phi times cos theta, and AY is equal to a dash sine theta equals a sine phi sine theta. All right? So then, remember what I was saying is that we want to, we want to write it out in Cartesian vector form. So what do we have? A then equals a sine phi cos theta i plus a sine phi sine theta j and a cos phi k. Okay? So, I like actually what they're saying here. It says, you should not memorize this equation. Because if you memorize it, then you're not actually, um, you're not actually studying to be an engineer. Okay, engineers figure, need to learn to figure things out from first principles. Okay, what have we done this whole time? We have looked at the angles that we have, and we, from first principles, we've used trigonometry to be able to get them. What if, what if they give you this angle, and they give you this angle, and, you, and you've, memorized, you've memorized this equation? It's going to be wrong. So, so remember, this, this is just specifically for the, the case that we saw now. We will now, in the next video, we'll look at an example, and we will try to put this into practice. Okay, so again, I'm going to recap. What are we trying to do? We are trying to, we are trying to convert these these vectors into Cartesian vector form, okay? And before, what we did was we, 
we used our coordinate direction angles, but this time it may be represented in this way, with these angles. And the way we do it is the way that we've just described. Okay, guys, again, if you've got any questions, email me and or put some comments in, this, in, the, in the comment section. And uh, yeah, some feedback uh, would be appreciated to let me know if it's, if it's helping and um, if we should continue making these videos. Thanks a lot.